Hey, what's going on? It's me, John D. Valero. Get ready, stand by. We are about to go live on News Talk 1040, show number 40 here. A lot going on. We're going to be joined by Alan Beal of the Armed Forces Brewing Company at the 5 o'clock hour Eastern time here. It is 4.05. I'm going to chill it because we are going to get ready to take the feed from News Talk 1040 and have a great show. Paula Valero is going to join us today. We're going to talk Trump. We're going to talk all kinds of of th different things in the news. You never know where it's going to go. That's why you have to tune in. So stay tuned right here. going to chill myself, and then we will talk to you here in about 60 seconds. But then on Thursday... And welcome to the John Villarreal Show. Now, here's John. Hey, everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Villarreal, live on News Talk 1040 AM all around the greater Tampa Bay area. Hey, it's, we're closing down on March right now. It is March 25th at 4.06 p.m. Eastern Time here on News Talk 1040 AM. I don't care if you're in downtown St. Pete, Tampa Bay, uh, you know, Bradenton, Braden. Uh, 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 there's so many different places out here. I'm, I'm right now in Sarasota. And we're, we're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. And also, uh, I mean, we are doing it all right now. Big, 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 big show today. A lot of news, a lot of news. Hey, time out. President Trump, what happened in New York? The appellate uh, court kind of smacked down uh, judge, uh, the judge there and Goran, Ed de Goran, I don't, I, I, we'll, Paul will get the pronunciation right here, um, in that case. And that is a big deal. That is a huge deal. We now, have, we went from Letitia James, AG, New York Attorney General. I'm, there's so many things I'm talking about right now. I'm just going a little too fast. Let's slow it down. New York Attorney General, Letitia James, got punked by the appellate and and so did the judge got punked but you know in this ruling by the appellate division out there in new york state that the fine has now been reduced from 454 million to like 175 million paul will give us i don't i'm not making any allegations here or making any claims Paul will give us the updated information on that. Also, the restrictions about Trump being involved in the business, and that, that, a lot of those are lifted. Things have changed. A lot of things we got to talk about. Rona McDaniels now with the former RNC uh, chair. Uh, Mitt Romney's niece, I believe, is now with NBC News. Uh, a lot of things about the polls. There's things going on in the UN. There's stuff going on in the economy. Automotive is getting is is still getting punked. It's getting tougher in automotive. So much to talk about in the five o'clock hour. We will be joined by Alan Beal from Armed Forces Brewing Company. That's going to be very exciting. Let's bring in Paul Villarreal right now, right here, to talk to us a little bit about what's going on with the news. Paul, what's going on? Okay, so the biggest news of the day, John and ten forty audience, is what you mentioned: Trump versus Judge Engoron. Actually, I don't know how to say it either. I think that's the way you say it, but I'm not certain. Let me look. Let me let so, me look. Go ahead. Yeah, what happened was, as you mentioned, the appeals court came back the, because Trump and his legal team had appealed the bond uh, figure, the bond uh, penalty, to the appeals court. I guess it's like an intermediate court. And they came back today, as you mentioned, with the figure of $175 million with a 10-day window to get the funds. Whereas what had been standing coming into today was about $450 million due today. So this is a massive victory for President Trump. It's it's unbelievable win. It cut it by about uh, two-thirds of what the number was. Trump already said today that he will put, post the bond, so he will be able to cover it. And, <laughs> as you mentioned, the some of the restrictions that had been 
on Trump and his two sons, Eric and Don Jr., those have been stayed, I think, in terms of being able to run Huge the business. Win. Big or win. Run a, that's a massive win. Run a business in New York. Also, I think the ability to ask for or seek a loan is has also been uh, restored in, uh, in short in, in the short term. So that's massive. And we talked about this off air. One of the biggest things about this is that coming off of of, of recent, you know, supposedly controversial remarks from President Trump, this goes this puts him back into kind of a sympathetic light. Before yes. he was being kind of like, maybe he's the bad guy or whatever. Now it's basically saying, no, he was mistreated by this lower court. And now, again, he's kind of the, the victim or the sympathetic figure rather than the bad guy. And at the, that timing of that is perfect. So that's that's the biggest news of the day, although there's a lot of other things that happen today. A, a huge win for Trump. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is a big, big win. Changes the situation, changes the dynamic there. Again, with that narrative coming out of New York, what impact do you think, and, I, and you can roll for about a minute or two, I'm sort of adjusting slightly some lights here. I've got them almost where I want them to be. We are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. And, and speaking of X, let me take a swerve for a second. Paul, I mean, this is not only, and this is such big news. You've been posting about this in X. And, and a lot of people have been responding. Why don't you sort of detail the tens of thousands of impressions that you've been getting on X and how important this is? I mean, th I think this shows the newsworthiness of this. You can roll for at least two minutes. Yeah, so, you know, I, 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 I have posted a couple, uh, particularly videos today that have gotten a, a, a large number of um, impressions. People are just all over this story. Both sides, both the left and the right, are all over this. The right is, of course, very happy about what's going on. However, the left, because what also happened today was that a trial date was set for the, the Stormy Daniels case. So the left is happy about that. So there's just a kind of almost a fever pitch of interest today on X about Donald Trump and about these legal cases. And what also is happening today was that two two things about True Social and yes. uh, the parent company of True Social, which is Trump Media and Technology Group. Um, number one, it will formally be traded as DJT, of course, President Trump's initials, <laughs> starting tomorrow, which is That's huge, good. and everybody is thrilled about that. And of course, what happened on Friday was it was, uh, I believe, the shareholders approved to take it public. So it is going public, which means President Trump's about to make a lot of money. And uh, that's happening That's happening tomorrow. And because that, that deal is going through, President Trump's net worth has now been recalculated by Bloomberg, I believe, at $6.4 billion, which as far as I know wow. is the richest he's ever been. I think his his high before was about four point seven billion. Wow. So again, you can imagine his supporters are thrilled. The left is unhappy. So it's it's just it's uh it's surging views all over X today. That's amazing. That is just absolutely huge. Um, no doubt about it. I think it's a, that's a big, big deal. This is so many different things that are sort of coalescing, if you will, kind of coming together at the same time and and now uh, we're seeing and we we're, we're either going to cover it in this show or we'll cover it on the live stream on different shows or we may cover it on both but i mean you've got things happening uh, just big big news happening with walt disney and the walt disney company lucasfilm the acolyte trailer has been severely ratioed in my opinion on uh youtube and stuff like that that is that is really bombing in terms in my opinion in terms of that um how do I say it? The, the 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 trailer 
and and really the the whole paradigm of of that whole situation and we'll talk about that um and we do not want to be misconstrued but you're seeing you're seeing time after time you're seeing issues with nike you're seeing issues with anaheim and bush and bud light you're seeing um issues now with the acolyte with the marvels the mcu and lucasfilm the star wars universe and the mcu for for disney you're seeing big big problems okay big problems a lot of people are saying that it, you know again the saying go go woke go broke a lot of people are having having big issues with the in the audience and the customers they're trying to frame this as hey you know uh, a vocal toxic fans are like wait a minute dude this is severely ratioed people are not liking this they're you're saying you're there's so much to go into here i'm just gonna try to headline it and then we'll we'll dive into each one later or 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 later on, on other shows but here's the headline uh you know you've got captain america 4 having issues you're having uh ryan uh, reynolds and hugh jackman kind of pushing back against some of the uh potentially allegedly woke stuff that they're trying to put into deadpool 3 and deadpool 3 has, deadpool's been very very successful and you know they're about to release that deadpool 3 and there's been a lot of pushback on that with joy behar and the view and different things happen there allegedly going on that you've got gina carano and the lawsuit against disney with funded by elon musk you know who's the proprietor of uh, uh you know the the uh, of x right he bought x and everything like that that we're streaming on right now you've got things happening with the acolyte it's been severely ratios and sh and show head uh showrunner uh, uh headland lore i think Laura, i got i gotta get the name right has come out and said uh, you know talking about different things and different things that they want to try to put into the into the show and fans and, and how they're departing from George Lucas's vision and they're going into the expanded universe or the EU right instead of instead of staying true to the original film the films and and that universe and that canon and a lot of people are like really not liking it and really pushing back against it you also have you know th things happening with the marvels and and the brie larson there's and then you also have things happening with the snow white situation there's just issue after issue after issue and bob Iger is out there top, talking happy talk meanwhile you've got you know uh you know shareholders some major shareholders that are kind of you know, pushing back uh and and saying that they're not happy with this and th there's big big issues then you have gdc you had this scream in and you you i uh oh gosh i gotta remember what's going on there but you're having gamergate 2 basically gamergate 2 the game developers conference just kind of wound down in san francisco i've been to many gdc's i've got pictures up there i used to host gamespot tv me adam sessler lauren fielder were the first hosts in the sega building in san francisco i was a world-class gamer i did gaming deals obviously i was i was doing a national show on uh, covering video games i'm definitely a video game expert i've played games all my life um, no doubt about it. And I've been to GDC, I've been to E3, I've done, I've done all that type of stuff. And you know, you're, you're having a situation, Paul, and we can dive into any one of these things. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I'll get your quick comments. You're having a situation where time and time again, you're basically having these big brands punking out and going directly against their core fans, their core customers their core audience and it just seems like the, the you know this woke agenda sort of tries to attach to anything that has money or is popular or whatever and then tries to just, you know just just shove it down people's throat now listen if you want to go out there and make a movie a totally different thing or make a you know a, a, a new story or whatever uh, that's completely woke and you want to do that and, and get your fans there, that's fantastic. And Laura, and, and Headland, I think, was talking about attracting new fans, stuff like that. Don't, how about this? Don't try to fool the, I'm not saying, I'm not alleging anything. I'm saying, let's totally separate, totally, totally hypothetical right now. It's not appropriate to try to fool an audience. It's not appropriate to do the, the, the bait and switch stuff like that. If you want to make a movie, go out there and make a movie. And, and you know, and then we'll see. It'll probably do the, the same kind of business that, like, you know, PBS does in terms of the viewership and stuff. And it's like, you know, yeah, Charlie Rose and, you know, was had his show on PBS and stuff. And, I, you know, it was a good show and everything. And, and that's great. It's not Joe Rogan. It doesn't, it, it would never capture those numbers. It's not uh, uh, Howard Stern or Rush Limbaugh and stuff like that. So 
I mean, you can't, again, a 50% solution is not a 100% solution. You can't just constantly punk out half the country or more now based upon the polls and say, hey, we're going to we're gonna punk you out. We're just going to, you know, uh, 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 blast you basically and, and, and make you toxic and, and, and politically radioactive. But hey, by the way, show up and go to buy our amusement park, you know, tickets and go to our movies and, and keep paying the money while we punk you out. And the thing is, what's really sad is there's a lot of, of of conservatives and men and other people that are feeling kind of really under attack culturally, if you will. And you've seen this with the manosphere. And I have my, you know, I, I you know, I, 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 we talk about some of that sometimes and I have some of my crit critiques on that. And I, I just, I kind of don't agree with, 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 fully with either side. We don't want to get too swerved into that right now at this point because we have too much show to cover. Um, but we will obviously come back to that at some, at some other points. But the point of it is, is that like, you, you know, you're, you're, you, I collected comic books when I was a kid, and Paul was there, obviously, and, and, and you know, we had the trading cards and comic books, and, and, and I remember going to Star Wars and being in line for seven times, at, at, you know, and this was a big deal, going with our Uncle Ronnie and everything, who was, you know, uh, uh, you know a, a scientist dude out of uh, uh, Notre Dame, and, and it was a big thing, and we were so excited about that, and the, the point of it is, is, you have a lot of people, and, and Paul, you'll speak this here in a second, from Appalachia or or Texas or Wyoming or you know Oklahoma, Tennessee, you know, flyover country, whatever here in Florida, in California, all over the place, that they feel like, hey, I can't get a date, I can't get married, I I, I you know I can't get I can't get get a good job, or I'm I'm having two or three jobs, you know I just want to play video games. I want I, I need something. I don't have much. I really don't have much. There's a lot of there's a lot of men that are that are really on the margins right now there's a, you know there, there, it's sad it's it's scary there's high suicide rates and stuff like that it's 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 really tragic situation i don't want to swerve too much into that but there's a lot of men that are like i don't know what to do dude and 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 or i'm working hard or i'm barely getting by or i have to and that, and, that, and men and women i mean i i think it's hard for everybody but i'm just speaking to this this you know the, there's a lot of fans out here if you look at the, at it, historically what it's been you know historically in terms of what the fan base of video games are. Now, obviously it's changing and, and we want things, we're all for peace, love, freedom, opportunity, democracy for everybody and, and diversity and all that type of stuff. But I'm just telling you that, you know, I'm just painting a picture. You, you work a hard job, you work three jobs, you're out there doing construction, you're doing something, maybe you work at Walmart, whatever it is, you're driving a truck, you're, you're digging ditches, you're doing something like that. You come home, you just wanna play your video game, you wanna do something fun, you, you wanna turn on UFC, you wanna turn on football, or you know you wanna, you wanna go to, you, you spend some money, you wanna see you know the next Captain America movie, the next Marvel you know comic movie, you wanna see Star Wars, you're, you're looking forward to these things. And when you go to these things, instead of seeing something that you enjoy, that you grew up with, that you want to have fun with, that you can escape, you're getting messages. You're getting woke, 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 woke. And it's depressing. And it's not fun. And you're like, why did I spend my 10 bucks? Why did I spend my $20 on this? Why did I spend $60, $70, $80 on a game like this? And, and why am I constantly getting this message that I'm bad, I'm not good enough, uh, people don't like me, America doesn't, it doesn't support me anymore? What am I doing? That's what I'm talking about right there. And I think it's really uncool. Right? Don't destroy the stuff that people like. Now, there's discussions about like you know certain things in video games, and and there you know every so often there's a discussion of well you know the violence, and there's different things, and there's 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 obviously different discussions. We're not going to solve it all here. I understand that. I'm not saying all games are perfect, or our gaming is perfect, or gaming culture, or anything like that. The gaming culture is its own thing. There's all kinds of different things that go into that, but. You know, it's. I just think it's unfair to come at something and just and take over a, a, a property, an IP, a franchise, a, a show, a, a universe, whatever it might be, and just punk on everything that's that's gone before it. Punk on the fan base. Punk on all that, and that we're gonna do it. I mean, it's like, dude, it's like it's it, it's just out of control. It's just too far. And even Bill Maher is like, this is too much. A lot of people are saying this is too much. I've gone on for a while. Paul, your comments. Yeah, look, I mean, talking about Disney, you're talking about a company that has taken three major brands, Disney itself, Marvel, and Star Wars, and from the lives of a lot of people, they've ruined them. And as you mentioned, I mean, we were massive Star Wars fans growing up. We had everything. We had Star Wars wallpaper, okay? We had 
every single thing you can imagine. And for fans like us or fans similar to us, again, I mean, you've ruined the, the, the you've ruined a lot of the lore. I mean, look at what they did to Luke Skywalker in the last trilogy. I mean, just as an example. And as you mentioned, look, if you want to expand the, 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 the universe and do different things like that, that's okay. That's fine. I mean, you, you know, you, you own that. You can do what you want to do with it. But don't be uh, confused when people, the old fan base, doesn't want to watch it anymore. And then if they don't watch it, don't come out and say, you're the problem. You're the reason that this isn't working, which is, it's just absurd. As you said, it's gone from entertainment into almost like a social engineering. And I don't want to be engineered when I watch a movie. I want to be entertained. And that's one of the big issues here. And so it's just, it's, it's un really unfortunate to see that it's happened like this. People are still pushing back. You mentioned the Acolyte. That has been for months on, I know on sites that I've seen oh, for months, people were warning, this isn't, this isn't going to be very good. And it's going to be supposedly another Kathleen Kennedy type of vehicle that you might not like. And here it is. And as you said, the most disliked, I guess, Star Wars video or trailer ever. So, look, I mean, this can't go on forever. And I think, to, to his credit, I think that Disney CEO Bob Iger is starting to try to kind of steer the train in a different direction. But as long as you have people in place like Kathleen Kennedy, in my opinion, you may keep getting uh, products that not everybody likes. Well said, no doubt about it. And it's just it's just not cool. And the thing of it is, is that, you know, businesses should be in the business of doing business. <laughs> right? That sounds redundant, but it's not right. I mean, stop with the messaging. Stop with the woke stuff. Stop with all. If that's part of your brand, if that's what your core audience wants. Maybe like, I don't know, um, let's just say Ben and Jerry's ice cream or something like that. I'm just I'm just throwing something out there. I'm just guessing. Totally fine. You know what I mean? Like like the branding of like a Lululemon is just, and I'm not making any accusations, I'm just throwing things out there, is different than the branding of a Bud Light, okay? The branding of a UFC. And it's a different thing. And so you have to work with people and stuff like that. I mean, what... Where do you think, we got three minutes, might as well keep talking about this a little bit, Paul. Where do you think this is going to go? You're seeing a bunch of L's, the, the, the woke universe, if you will, taking a bunch of L's, particularly entertainment. Where do you think this ends up? Are they going to course correct, or do you think we're going to get more of this? I think there's going to be an attempt to do more of it. Something I, I, I wanted to mention also is that this is apparently stretching into not only the video game space here, it's apparently stretching into people are trying to kind of, uh, I guess, from what I've read, kind of try to um, uh, control what's coming in from like foreign uh, video game makers. Like I've, I've heard stuff like, you know, some of the makers in Japan, their stuff's being criticized here. It's like you can't even let them make what they want to make over there. And it's going into criticism is also going into Japanese anime. So it's like, it's almost like you want to, uh, it seems as though there's this desire to control the entire space of these of these entertainment uh, verticals. And like you said, I mean, <laughs> it seems like, honestly, it seems kind of like Fahrenheit 451-ish or something like this. Like, you know, burning books or something where it's like, I mean, can I just read a book I want to read? And so that's, it just seems a little bit, really over the top i do think there's will be people continuing to try to push this this is where gamergate 2.0 came but the blowback is getting bigger and stronger and louder and i think that's where we're at blowback is getting bigger and bigger no doubt about it and it's getting louder uh, absolutely i think those are very very well said and i think people are just like it's just enough like people are just had enough of it all it's just it's too much lot to talk about oh my gosh one segment down Three more to go, players. We're going to be right back. Keep talking about Trump and politics, everything like that, on the John D. Villarreal Show here on News Talk 1040 AM, live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Be back in six minutes.
Got about two minutes for the air. It's about two minutes. Okay. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, John D. Villarreal, back on the John D. Villarreal Show here on News Talk 1040 AM all around the greater Tampa Bay area. It's super, super exciting. And we may, we may have big news soon. We can, we, 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 we may be talking about that as early as next week, but we're going to save that. Save that for later. But right now, we have big news that we're talking about with Trump. We have big news we're talking about with the whole woke well, people allegedly, you know, woke uh, Marvel Universe, MCU, and the Disney Star Wars Universe, and you know, Lucas Star, Star Wars Universe. But we also have, we were talking about Gamergate too. But, you know, we've got other things happening. We've got things happening. Over, we're also live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. And I had someone that pinged me on LinkedIn not sure those comments come over i may have to answer them later on linkedin i'm not sure they come over here live um i can take live comments uh via x and also via youtube so just something to be aware of there and i am monitoring the chat here as uh, uh as we go now i may be doing some things later we may be launching soon on rumble and so we're gonna look at different we're looking at different things so there's a lot of stuff that, that's going on there okay we also have to talk about this, players. Okay, there is a situation that's been going down on the right, on conservative media. And that is now Candace Owens and Daily Wire have gone their separate ways. That had been brewing for a while. And I think that got supercharged with the October 7th situation. I have some different things I want to say about that. I have some comments I want to say about that. It's interesting that... Um, Man, there's this lady on on YouTube, and she's really awesome. I'm not endorsing everything she does. I don't know everything she does, but when I see her, I'm like, oh, she's really, really cool. And and she a huge channel. It's funny because like she said things that are similar to mine. I mean, I I thought I came out first with some. Who knows? I'm not. I'm, you know, she's she's got a huge huge channel. Um, I, I'll try to find her. Uh, but Paul, tell me what is going on with this. Give us lay out the facts on this because this has gotten a lot of heat. And, and people are talking about this. Yeah, this is a big one. Uh, this has a lot of different dimensions to it, talking about Canis and Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro. So basically what happened was, I, I don't remember what day it was, maybe Friday, Thursday of last week. Anyway, basically, uh, Jeremy uh, Boring, 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 I, boring. I, I think that's his name, Boring, sorry, um, who is, uh, my understanding, I believe, co-owner or co-founder of the Daily Wire Correct. with Ben Shapiro, simply made a, a basic tweet that just said, the Daily Wire and Candace Owens have, have parted ways or so, are no longer partners, you know, whatever it was. So that's basically, that was it. That was a drop. And then soon after that came out, Candace herself put out a, a post on X saying, I'm essentially, I, I'm free now, it's true, or something to this effect. Look, this is this is a very complicated thing. I think that that Ben Shapiro I think there was, as you mentioned, after ten seven in Israel, there were a variety of remarks made by Candace Owens that were maybe critical of Israel and um expanded a little bit beyond that i think in my opinion we don't have to get in everything but and ben didn't appreciate them and he basically said that mm -hmm. and there were a lot of other people on the right who didn't appreciate them but to be fair to candace there were a lot of people who did appreciate them now, i don't know if they were all conservatives but they were you know their voices were loud as well so we've talked about this my own personal feeling on this is that I don't, I don't really listen to or watch Ben Shapiro or Candace Owens. So this doesn't affect me a lot personally. I mean, if I, if I want to see them, it doesn't matter if Candace is with Daily Wire or not. And I think there is a part of this in my own personal opinion. I think Candace may have been ready to move on from Daily Wire even before the 10-7 stuff went down. So, um, 
that's the kind of basic overview. There's been a whole bunch of, of peripheral issues related to this. Um, Candace has been kind of feuding on <laughs> Twitter with a person named Rabbi Shmuley, who um, he believes that he was instrumental, I guess, in, in helping the, the uh, parting of ways occur. Uh, so that's been going on. Um, again, I, you know, look, I don't agree with some of the things that Candace Owens said following 10-7. I'll just say that straight up. And I, I've expressed that on X before. Again, though, I'm not, I'm not caught up in this. Right. Like, this isn't something I think about every day because I just don't watch them. Well, and that's what I've said, and I said that, you know, and I'm not trying to be a punk. I know they're like super successful, way more successful than 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 us, and and stuff like that. Um, no doubt about it. And I did find the person here. Um, I think she's done stuff with Prager U, uh, Prager University. It's Amala Ekpunobi, and she's got a huge channel on youtube and just just absolutely crushing it like let me see if i can find her here she's got 1.85 million subscribers uh 1600 videos she does shorts she does regular videos and stuff like that um uh, definitely on the conservative uh side but but definitely has her own you know very independent streak you know um a young performer just really just crushing it and and i think um very well spoken outspoken um, uh, more thoughtful than anything. And what, that's what I really like about her is I think she's very thoughtful and stuff. And the problem of it is, is that, you know, I, as they say in the wrestling parlance, you know, controversy creates cash. And I just feel like, you know, Candace Owens is, uh, how do I say this? Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I have mixed feelings. I feel like she's someone, you know, not unlike Dana Loesch that just kind of uh, a, like a moth to flame, like, you know, seeks, or potentially even creates controversy. I do agree with with what um, uh, Tim Cass was saying. You know, Tim Pool and also Glenn Greenwald had a big an uh, analysis on this. Has done some serious reporting and whatever you want to say about. Uh, and I, I, I listen. I really appreciate Glenn Greenwald, um, and I think he's done some really great work. But definitely, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, or or criticism, or anything like that. Potential criticism. Everyone's I, well. I don't want to say everyone. That's, that's a little too strong. You definitely have to respect Glenn, Glenn Greenwald as a reporter. You know, not unlike Barry Weiss, but I think Glenn, Glenn Greenwald does some excellent, excellent reporting, has some great sources and stuff like that. And really kind of detailed, like, look, you know, Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire, you know, they, they he went through this thing of talking about when they and and, and I only, and I'm not saying this to be a punk. Again, they're very they're very much successful. I'm glad all these people are on the on the right. I'm glad all their are conservatives of, of different, you know, uh, uh, varieties if you will, whatever. We all have different beliefs, right? It's a big tent. Um but it is to try to to lay it out a little bit, okay? And what Glenn Glenn Greenwald was saying, which is what I said and what Patrick Bet David was saying and others have said you know, I think Tim Cass and and in and, and pushing back against Dave Rubin a little bit and Patrick Beck David on like because we were talking about oh who's bigger, who's more influential in the conservative side, you know, Tucker or Ben Shapiro. And Dave Rubin's like, I don't know, it's kind of close. I'm like, dude, it's not it's nowhere close. It's not even close to close. It's nowhere, it's like in, in no way, shape, or form is it close. You've got Donald Trump, President Trump, number one by far right now. MAGA is in total control. If Trump tweets, if Trump does anything, everybody's reacting to it okay and that's what it that's what it is okay from national press on down whatever and, and rightfully so he's the main you know he's the he's the presidential candidate for the republican party former president worldwide global international star all that type of stuff after that you've got tucker carlson and i'm talking in terms of intellectual like you know um rogan in a certain way but but it's 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 different like rogan has bigger viewership i really think it's trump Tucker, then you've got Rogan, uh, Musk, and Rogan, and then after that, Patrick, Bet David, and you've got a whole bunch of other people in that mix. You know, some would say Megyn Kelly, and you know, you can Daily Wire, you can do all kinds of different things. I don't think that Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, on a day-to-day -day basis, 
is that influential. You know, and, and this is coming from someone that's like, I'm nobody, right? I mean, I've said that before. I mean, I'm, we're very happy to be on News Talk 1040. As I like, I love to say about myself, I'm nobody. I just know a lot of things. I know a lot of people, right? And so I'm able to, uh, I've, I've been around, I've, I've met or been close to or one, one sep degree of separation, like the brother or the friend or whatever it is from, you know, uh, uh, more billionaires than almost anybody that's not directly in that world or a billionaire themselves. You know what I mean? Like I've it's had a very interesting life. It's not about that. I don't want to swerve. I'm making the point of this, that I know some things. Okay. And what was said by Glenn Greenwald in his analysis is that, look, you know, Daily Wire, which is how I said, they spend buckets of money. I mean, I've heard like six figure buys, maybe more. Uh, I don't know if I've heard a seven figure buy, but I think I think I'm not alleging anything. I'm not alleging anything, Ben Shapiro. I'm just this is what I've this is what I've heard. My recollection, my personal opinion reportedly uh that it's six figure buys per month per month on on facebook and now what glenn greenwald re refreshed my memory was that that mark zuckerberg early on met with dave Sh ben shapiro ben shapiro went to go meet with zuckerberg and this is this is glenn greenwald saying you can check it out it's on rumble and it was like he was saying that like after that you couldn't i mean ben shapiro was pushed like never before and so like on Facebook, just shove down people's throats, you know, metaphorically speaking. And so the point of it is, is who knows? We don't know. Now, there was other influence. I think Beck and also other people went there uh, to meet with Zuckerberg. I don't know if Shapiro had a private meeting with Zuckerberg, but, but also the Daily Wire was funded. I mean, so you're looking at a you're it's a it's a very, very, very different thing to have someone like, you know, Amala or. Tim Cast or Rogan or now Rogan was already established and had money and was able to do his thing, but but there's a lot of people and, and even Steven Crowder. And like listen, I'm no Steven Crowder fan. I'm just telling you that right now. I'm not a I'm not a you know, I'm I am i will just leave it at that. I mean, I'm not a hater, I'm not I don't hate anybody, but I mean I'm not a Steven Crowder fan. But I give Crowder his respect in that he figured it out and was able to climb and claw his way up to a very, very healthy, substantial place of prominence and, and audience. He figured it out. So the, the the way I look at Steven Crowder is different than the way I look at Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, th that's a funded operation, from what I understand, and, and reported by 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 um by Candace, uh, sorry, by Glenn Greenwald. That they 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 got they got some kind of funding from one of the big donors, and I think I vaguely remember that too. And then they, and then shortly thereafter, you know, or not sorry, they got this big funding to start. If you if you give me to, we've done this all, all, all. I've done this all by myself. Paul's been in the mix of like that. Like this is all grassroots. This is all real. I remember again when Paul was interviewed by the New York Times way back in the day, and we'll talk about that. And we were crushing on YouTube and just growing by you know leaps and bounds. Sometimes 10, 20, 30 percent per month. Just just taking you know just getting all kinds. Every time I'd open up, like whoa, just blowing. You know, just 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 growing super fast until they you know that. Well, I'm not okay. I'm not alleging anything, but somehow, some way, the growth, the, the the growth. There was a bungee jump. It was a drop. There was a huge thing. But the point of it is, is we were doing it all by ourselves. I was doing it all by myself. Paul was in the mix, all this type of stuff. Other people coming on the show. But the point of it is, is at some point, the New York Times, it was so hot that the New York Times interviewed Paul by the dark web and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know, buddy. And then, and then he, and he's like, oh, no. He, you know, he thought Big Brother was trying to kind of, you know, uh, Bigfoot him, step on him, whatever like that, until he found out himself. And the thing of it is, I think one of the questions where, and we'll bring him in in a second, was, uh, who, who's behind you? Where's the fun? Who's funding you? Like, Nobody, dude. But but see, this is the thing, is that there's so many of these things. This just goes to Cat Williams. There's so many of these things. And I'm not alleging anything. I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just saying what Cat Williams says. He called Kevin Hart a plant. So many of these things are plants. This is the point. So many of these things are pushed. We're going to push Dylan Mulvaney. Fill in the blank. What, whoever. We're going to push Kevin Hart. We're going to push Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. We're going to push. And it's not organic. I'm not saying any. I'm not alleging anything. I'm just, I mean, that's just a separate thought. So many of these things 
in media is pushed. When I was on a TV show, I've been on radio, I've been on TV shows. But radio's cool. Radio lets you do your thing. But, you know, if I, that's why I do news talk because I have my choice. Hey, John, do you want to be on the sports station? Or, hey, John, do you want to be on the news talk station? I was like, I really want to be on news talk because I want to do whatever I want to do any given time. This is my show. It, you, you never even know. We have a whole thing. Paul sent me a whole thing here to listen out. I, I, I might look at two of those and I'm running. I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. We, everybody knows that. If you've listened in, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. We never know where it's going to go. And sometimes afterwards, Paul's like, what are you talking about? And then they listen back. Oh, it's a great show. And so, and, and sometimes I'm, I miss the mark. It happens, but that's what it is. But then, you know, and with the sports thing, you're like, hey, you got to be sports and you got to talk about the, how many runs. And, and like, I don't want to be limited at that. But, but with radio, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty much you have a lot of freedom, right? And podcast, you have almost ultimate freedom. That's why people like that. But with TV, that's very different, particularly national TV, movies, whatever. Movies, there's a T and TV too. Here's a script. This is what you're going to say. You're going to have this time. We might have this and that. You're going to, you know, you might talk for, to a reporter for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever, and then it's going to be pu pushed down. The point of it is, but these are big operations. These are funded operations, right? A lot of times. So it's very different from doing it organically versus having a funded operation. Uh, it, it, the Daily Wire was a funded operation. That doesn't make it wrong or bad or discredited or anything like that. It just makes it different. I'll get to that in a second. Then you're meeting with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and supposedly, according to Greg and Greenwald, there's this huge push Huge push. Hey, if Glenn Green, if, if Facebook put my videos up every day on the front page, if YouTube put our videos up every day in front page, and I think Tim Tim Poole was saying, yeah, guaranteed millions of views, like like automatic, because you got like a whatever it is, a billion people on YouTube, but it's some huge number. And then on top of that, they're spending, you know, potentially, allegedly, reportedly, six figures plus on advertising every month on Facebook, or they were. Okay, so that's not to punk out Ben Shapiro or Daily Wire or anything like that. And here's how it's relevant. It's all gonna we're gonna land the plane right now. When Candace Owens, if some people would say, look, look listen, everybody wants to get over on media and they want to make money and they want to do their own thing and they want to get big and you know, people that go to Hollywood want to be rich and famous. A big shock, I know. Same thing with media. Big shock, I know, okay? Even though, even people that might cover issues or conservatives, that's why a lot of people call it Con Inc., right? It's a business, right? It's a business. It, it's the cause, but it's the business. And so you have, and Paul will speak to this, and he can do a great job here in a second. I got 60 more seconds, I'm gonna turn over to him. So, you know, Candace goes from daily from 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 Charlie Kirk, and maybe doesn't think. You know, you have to pick which which team you think's the best. If you're a free agent in the football or whatever, you're gonna you want to be on a winning team, right? Maybe maybe Charlie Kirk at that time wasn't doing so great. Was trying to figure it out. Production wasn't so great. Whatever. Now Turning Point's a monster. They're they're crushing it. They're, they're I applaud Charlie Kirk. Fantastic, um, uh, unbelievable operation there. Okay, and then she goes over to Daily Wire because Daily Wire is hot. And they had the studios. And they had the funding. It's that whatever. And I think at some point in time, I don't know if Candace thought he, she was bigger. Than than Daily Wire or Daily Wire was losing heat. But again, all I said, all those things, not to punk out Ben Shapiro and Daily Wire. It's just to say that, it, you know, it's very different, you know, having organic growth as Rush Limbaugh, the great Rush Limbaugh used to say, if they can't make you, they can't break you. Rush Limbaugh's office, the, the, uh, audience, there was another one, was organic. Now, yeah, he met with, with Roger Ailes and yeah, they picked him from KFBK in Sacramento and, and they brought him up, but he, he had the talent. He earned his way up. It was many, many years. That's very different than someone say, hey, here's a star. But great, great example. Chuck Todd, Chuck Todd on Meet the Press is different than Chuck Todd on YouTube. I promise you. Okay. In my opinion. So I think it got to a point where Candace Owens maybe had a difference of opinion. There was different, definitely issues there. But I think there was also some business things involved there. And I think Candace maybe thought that maybe Daily Wire wasn't as hot as it really was maybe the influence what wasn't meeting the views or maybe she could do better or who knows this is all speculation but i think there's something to that paul your comments yeah look i totally agree with you on that you, you mentioned stephen crowder no doubt he worked super hard to get himself over and it was organic and i mean he worked really hard he wasn't you know i agree with you that's a different thing rush limbaugh is the the ultimate example Sure, they might have helped the one out, but I remember Rush on going on like Nightline yes. in like the late 1980s. He proved himself on all formats at all levels. He absolutely deserved everything he had. And I would make, say an entertainment uh, analogy to Rush's Roseanne Barr. Great her, analogy. Her show was 
gigantic. Not only was it gigantic once, it was gigantic twice. And hold on one second. Let me, let me just give applause at Rush. I mean, the, the, the absolute greatest, the best ever. I met James Golden, uh, also known as AK Boast Nerdly. Just, just the best. I mean, and so many people wouldn't have been here, but what for Rush? And really, he brought it up, even handy. So many things. We, we definitely miss Rush. Rush in peace. Rush, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Rush is the the ultimate. He's everybody looks up to him. I, I, they should, and they do. Now, let's just tell this story very quickly because you brought it up. New York Times, New York Times called me up in two thousand and eight and asked me if I wanted to interview. John warned me against talking to them. And the reason why I want to bring this story up right now is because they just... I did. It's a little scary. Kind of suck- Go ahead. Yeah, they just suckered in Bill Ackman. They, That's they just right. did a profile. Well, Go ahead. Just Go, profile I, I promise I'll shut up. Tell, tell, the whole, tell the whole story. This is... You're on hot. Go ahead. Go. They just kind of did a profile of more Loomer. They keep <laughs> working to do profiles or whatever you want to call it on the Dilly meme team. Here's the commonality. The commonality is, is that the New York Times comes for you, so to speak, metaphorically, on the right, when you're a conservative, when you're effective. Okay? Bill Ackman has had a, a tremendous influence on things. Nobody has is, is had more influence recently and politically, in my opinion, than Laura Loomer. And the Dilly Meme team is like <laughs> pop culture best on the internet, particularly on Twitter. Well, back in 2008, I was asked, I was kind of um, prodded, so to speak, to make political videos. And I started doing that. I had already done some other videos that weren't that weren't political, but I had been I developed some talents in video editing, essentially. So I started doing these. A couple of them in particular got very big and got a lot of circulation. And I suppose that I guess whoever it was told the New York Times that, you know, maybe this guy's effective and we want to talk to him. Now, what John warned me about, and he was right, he had already gone through this himself, was they're not they're not there to help you. They're not there to make you look good. And I kind of blew that off. Like, oh no, it's you know it's all okay, everything. Then I talked to him, then I read the article, and then I realized John was right. They weren't there to help me. They weren't there to make me look good. They weren't there to tell my side of the story. They were there, in my opinion, to co-opt me, get me to agree to the interview so that they could use my words against me, in my opinion, and make me look bad. So if it's basically if you have somebody who is an ideological opponent and you want to kind of um, portray them in a negative light, Best thing you can do is talk to them, kind of lure them in, sucker them, and then turn it against them. And that's exactly what happened to me, and I fell right into the trap. And again, I mentioned Bill Ackman. Laura Loomer probably didn't talk to the New York Times because he's probably too smart for that. Dilly Mean Team, they're not talking to the New York Times. Bill Ackman, you got suckered into that, and I love Bill Ackman. And uh, Moms for Liberty, who I really like a lot, they got suckered into going on 60 Minutes. And the, the moral of the story here is, in my opinion, don't talk to the corporate media when they come calling if you're a conservative because uh, more likely than not, they're going to try to make you look bad. Well, and it, great story, Paul. Appreciate you telling that and no doubt about it. And, and, and sorry for a little interrupting there. I tried to try to enhance the story and then I got out of your way. But I will say this, in defense of you, a strong defense. You're talking about 2008, 2009, whenever that happened. Very different. We've had 20 years, almost, almost getting on, getting closer to 20 years here of since where it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And 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 so yeah. So I mean, you know, what people know now versus what they knew in, in 2008, 2009 is very, very different. And obviously, you live and learn, no doubt about it. Hey. Get ready, players, because at the 5 o'clock hour, we've got Alan Beal from uh, Armed Forces Brewing Company. I'll, let me hope I got that right. I'm all over the place right here with my stuff. Uh, Alan Beal, Armed Forces Brewing Company. It's going to be great. We're going to talk about it at the 5 o'clock hour. You're listening to John D. Valero Radio Show here on News Talk 1040, live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and X. We'll be right back in six minutes.
What's good, Alan? You ready? Uh, <laughs> yes. Cool. Yes. cool. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. 5.06, we should be live. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, try to get some water, recharge a little bit. I'm excited. I'm going to read off of your bio on your website. Excited about all this. Can't wait to hear about it, brother. It's going to be fun. Be fun. Yeah, man. Thank you for making the time. See you soon. I do who that is.
Hey, John. Hey, John. Yeah, go ahead. Gonna be gonna in be in Mongo 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 Mongo. Say it one more time. Gonna be gonna be at Mongo 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 Fourth. Whoa, that's amazing! I'd love to go to that. Are you kidding me? We definitely, yeah, I definitely. I'd love to talk business with you, you know, off offline for sure. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of potential synergies. We definitely need to need to connect for sure. No doubt about it. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, we're yeah, going, we're going with nine nine one one former, former ice ice track home home. home. Tr- Forty five five there there forty five seven seven. Wow. Then we're going to Texas. Oh my goodness! Now, just a warning. Audio wise, like like. Like I'm hearing like like half to three quarters, but then some of it's cutting out. I'm not totally sure what what that is, if that's on my end or your end. So just just triple check that. Uh, Sometimes a Bluetooth or something. That's why I hardline on myself. I, we definitely need to talk, man. Absolutely. I'd love to connect with you and definitely would love to. Like I said, be be a Mario Lago, talk business and everything, and hopefully I'm having good news. I mean, with the station, uh, I can't say too much because this is live on LinkedIn Facebook. But I'm meeting, yeah, yeah, we're meeting we're meeting later this week, and I think there's some big plans. So hopefully, okay, we gotta get ready here. We got about probably 30 seconds or less. This is I don't know. I don't know what it. What's up, everyone? It's me, John D. Valero. We are back. Five o'clock hour, players. You're driving home right now. You're listening at work. Whatever you're doing, this is the John D. Valero radio show here on News Talk 1040 all over the greater Tampa Bay area, everywhere from Lakeland, Sarasota, Longbow Key, downtown St. Pete, downtown Tampa, Wesley Chapel, Brandon, Braden, and everywhere in between. Also live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. And I am pleasantly surprised not surprised but happy to welcome in alan beal of armed forces brewing company let me li- load this up here with his permission i'm reading this off the website here alan beal is a ceo he is the chief executive officer of armed forces brewing company alan's a 35 year veteran of the food and beverage industry he has a passion for craft beer in the military he has led operating and grown profitable multi-unit independent food and beverage groups in denver kansas city charlotte markets He comes from a four-branch military family. His grandfather, father, brother, nephew, two uncles, and several cousins all served in the U.S. Navy, Marine Corps, Army, and Air Force. His cult-like dedication to the Boston sports team and Nebraska and Navy football is annoying. That's off his website. We love it. Alan Beal, come on in here. Tell me about Armed Forces Brewing Company. Welcome to the John D. Villa Radio Show. Hey, Hey, John. John. Thanks Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah, a little bit of an echo, a little bit of a thing. There's some technical stuff here. That's okay. We'll do our best. It happens. What's going on? What is Armed Forces Brewing Company? From what I can see here, it's like the kind of situation we have to be careful what we say, of course, but it looks like this is something where it's kind of trying to incorporate grassroots support for this company. Now, tell me why, how you came up with Armed Forces Brewing Company. You've been a veteran of the uh, food and beverage uh, uh, industry. Why Armed Forces Brewing Company? So, so military company that's exploded on the scene here. here. Uh, we had we had an idea. I lived, lived in Nassau at the time, and two my partner had an idea, idea about, about so they they creating, creating a craft beer company that mirrors the tribute. Made in Annapolis, you know, in Annapolis, the U.S. Naval Academy. And, and uh, we, put we put it out on social media, media and, uh, and uh, we had uh, and listed, listed folks, folks all, all over the world, world actually, saying, saying, where's, where's this beer? I, I want it now. now. Where, where, can where can I, I get it? There's a message from Okinawa uh, uh, messaging with Twitter, 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 Twitter and stuff to find, find out where this is. Where this so, so we knew we had some special. Um, um, and I came from the military family and, and the beverage, beverage industry, industry kind of, kind of put two together. together. And uh, uh, after, after a while, we the Navy, Navy out there, there and the airmen started coming at us, the soldiers started coming at us. There's our beer, 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 so. And, 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 and I, group, group and call it our first drink cup. That's amazing. So, so, so let me get this straight. It's you had you you developed something. You, you had something of high quality and people started flocking to it. Do you think 
that, and, and I, I want to be careful how I phrase this. Obviously, you feel like you've got a great quality product, I'm sure. But do you feel like the the bulk of the energy is behind the products or is the bulk of the energy behind the affinity because people particularly now against and i know i i did read what you said on linkedin that you were you were, you were going to hold nothing back that people want something that's not woke people want something that's americana that's patriotic you know whether it's the maga hat or the armed forces brewing hat or the or the rock in the t-shirt right now that people want to believe in america again the land of the home the home the, the home of the brave land of the free home of the brave Tell me about that. Like, what, like from a business perspective, as a CEO, like, where do you think the competitive advantage is on on your with your company? Sure, I, sure, need I did a little adjustment. Here, you okay, okay. Still a little, Still a little yeah, a little bit better, a little bit better. Anyway, so, so I grew, I grew up, up in, the in the military community. community. So I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a patriotic guy. Everybody, everybody in our company loves, loves America. We, we love, love our military. We got that patriotism in our DNA. DNA. And, and no, no, the country. This, this started, started in, in, in our, our view losing that, that a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, all, you know, all the better things that we have, have out there with, with the VA, the VA and health care benefits better, better and, and, and the homelessness and, and better PTSD uh, side. Uh, uh, and and, and it's case, case in point, point. The, 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 the country, country showing, showing out of 150 billion dollars is whatever numbers you know, you know, believe, believe on, on illegal, illegal immigrants. immigrants. And we've got, we got uh, the, you know, you know, veterans, veterans homeless, homeless and, and, and food, food security, security and 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 ever and ever to do these members. members. This, stuff this stuff is ridiculous. ridiculous. So, so there's, 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 there's a lot. lot of, you're you're award award of Robert, 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 the award winning pastor, officers from the Maryland governor of brewing He's 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 a he's a brewmaster in the United States. We put, we put all those, those uh, uh, together, together here, and, and, and got veterans. veterans. But one of but my one of my partners, partners the O'Neill, who I'm a I'm a lot. He's an owner in the company. Wow, wow. Oh, wow. We, got we got a slew, a slew of, of veterans, veterans and great beer and great patriotic, you know, messaging along with it. It's a lot of fun. That's and we awesome. Do a lot of give back as well. Absolutely. Now I just made an adjustment on my end to try to help. With the, with the audio, I hope that helped a little bit there. And sometimes these things happen on, on, a, on a technical thing. Worst, worst case scenario, you can always hit my cell and then we can we can uh, put you on uh, that way. But I mean, I want to try to d d keep this rolling if we can. I, I think people really want that. People really want Americana. People really want to feel patriotic. People want to feel good about America. Why, why wouldn't you, right? I, and I do think that there was that viral moment, if you will, and I mean, I get like, I mean, I understand both both sides of this. And sometimes, you know, what, things that happen on the campaign trails may be a little bit unfair. But I, I do remember that viral moment when that veteran went up to Nikki Haley and said that, hey, why your campaign spent like, you know, almost $100 million or whatever the number was, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars in Iowa. You, you know, you didn't look like you had a chance to win. And yet there's all these homeless veterans, stuff like that. And then she's like, well, my husband's a veteran. And they had that back and forth. I don't know if you saw that or not. And again, I'm not, I'm not putting the blame necessarily on on Nikki Haley and stuff. But I mean, there, there you, I do take your point of how, wherever you want to look at it. Foreign aid, there's different things. There's tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars that are spent on different things, and yet we have problems right here at home. And it sounded like with Armed Forces Brewing Company, you wanted to do something that you could employ veterans have people feel good about America, put jobs right here and get a, a, a quality, you know, um, uh, product out to the market. Yeah, we're at, we're at about 80% in uh, veteran and their family members employed right now. Um, we're making great beer. We're in like eight states right now. The chains just came running after us. We're in Walmart and Publix and Winn-Dixie. Right down in your area, too, in Tampa Bay, we're, we're uh, all over stores there through uh, Pepin Distributing. Uh, we've got statewide distribution in Florida. So we're on a national plan with the Army Air Force uh, exchange stores and the Navy exchange stores as yes. well. And yeah, and, and uh, Carnival Cruise Lines just picked our beers up. Oh, cool. We'll be in Talladega, uh, April 21st, our beers going into concessions at Talladega, Richmond, and Homestead Speedways this year. So 
we're scaling out, we're growing, the patriotism is flowing, and we're using our success to give back to some really great veteran organizations as well. That is, that is so fantastic. That is really awesome. People love to hear that story. And people love the part of what I do here on John D. Villa radio show is, I mean, obviously, you know, we talk about conservative talk and diff different things like that. But I also talk about business and venture capital and Silicon Valley and technology. And I'm, it may, uh, you could be part of this, actually. I talked to Laura DeBello, the former uh, um, uh, Secretary of Commerce for the state of Florida. And now she's doing some other stuff. And I've had an idea. And I've kind of maybe you saw some of it on my LinkedIn, and I'm a, I'm hopefully about to launch it, you know, and and maybe full more more of a, a full thing, but to do a a tech hub or a business hub, maybe a venture hub, maybe that's a better way to say it, a venture hub here in, in Sarasota, the Greater Tampa Bay area, that is, you know, I don't want to maybe conservative, but at least not political, uh, 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 not woke, if you will. I mean, I think that was the big, big miss that the Miami tech scene had. And you have people like Elon Musk talking about stuff. I was in Silicon Valley, you know, at Internet 1.0, 1988 to like 2011 type of, you know, the greater Silicon Valley, you know, type of type of space, you know, when horseshoes around the bay there. But and. You know, back in those times, particularly early times, it was like, yes, of course, the Bay Area is a little bit liberal, but it really was everyone from around the world. It's what are you working on? We don't care who you vote for. What can you do? Let's go. Let's change the world. It wasn't that th this is insanity now that we have right now. And I think that there's yeah. such a need from entrepreneurs like yourself or Black Rifle Coffee or Joe Rogan. And there's a lot of conservative media here. I'm here. Uh, Rumble's over there in Longbow Key. Charlie Kirk and Turning Point's here. Uh, Trump media uh, is downtown Sarasota. You've got all this, the, the, this, this, this critical mass that's building. And I think that people want a place where, Hey, they can, they can support brands that they want to support like, like American forces, uh, armed forces brewing company, but also they can learn from great entrepreneurs. They can go to conferences. They can understand how to level up and have a community. What do you think about something like that? Um, uh, I'll tell you what, we have this incredible community. Um, it, it's a shame it's gone that way. You know, you know, uh, Everybody loves beer. <laughs> you know, I've said this before. Yeah. Even yeah. communists drink beer, but they won't like ours. <laughs> you know, so uh, that's a great line. You, know, you said something about venture capital, John. You know, I, I I've been working on this concept in this company for eight years since 2015. Wow! I went. I spent four years going out to venture capital. The, you know, even the, even the Silicon Valley folks. They probably shut you I, down. Uh, for five years, for yeah. four or five years. I no, know no, game. no, no, no. This will never go anywhere. We don't believe your business model. We don't right. believe your numbers. We don't right. believe you. And fi I finally ran into a securities attorney that lives in Tampa Bay that used to be a, 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 a show host on your station named Kendall Almarico. Wow. And and he is the he's kind of the godfather securities attorney of, of a program that was put in place by the SEC in 2012 called Regulation A. Oh, yeah. It's for, it's for private companies uh, that you know, venture capital wasn't taking a look at them. You know what I mean? They weren't yep. shelling out any money. It was all tech and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So I found him and he took us on as a client. And we launched our first Regulation A public stock offering. You're a private company. You're not publicly traded. Sure. Okay? But you're, you're, you're selling stock in your private company and raising capital to grow. We did our first round. We launched on July 4th of 2021. Uh, we raised $7.5 million. We went we looked all over Florida for a brewery to, to acquire. All over. We're working with Enterprise Florida. Uh, and the Secretary of Commerce. That's where Laura is now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And wanted to find that brewery in, is for sale down in Florida. Couldn't find one. We found one in Virginia, in Norfolk, Virginia. Sure. And Governor Yunkin got a hold of us and said, oh. hey, I, I, want you, I want you guys here. So we we just bought this, this regional-sized brewing facility in Virginia. And here we are starting out in Florida, you know, just, just developing our entire uh, distribution network. So anyway, we, we launched our first round, $10 a share. It's a $200 minimum buy-in. We closed it. I just want to make sure that I know we're regulation A and everything yeah. like that, but I just want to make sure that, that we're super compliant with everything on. We are on a public. We are. 
Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. I'm well schooled. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, so, yeah, we 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 uh, closed that round in like July, June or July of 2023, and opened our second round at a twelve dollar and fifty cent share price. This is a five million dollar capital raise, so we can go and open a tap room foodery concept. And we're looking in in the Florida area for this. It's a no brainer. Oh, we'd love but to anyway, have you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th this is a program for companies like ours that couldn't raise money. Today, we've got over ten thousand plus. Wow. shareholders in our company from all 50 states, a huge amount down in Florida. We're crushing it in sales down in Florida and they own this company with, with us. They're part of the company. So it's amazing. It's, it's a kind of community. Like it's kind of when you have like these employees and, you know, kind of like w employee ownership, whether it was like, uh, I, what is it? Yeah. Um, not, it was the, um, one of the airlines did this and, 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 and things like that. And I think we're super aligned in what we're seeing. Well, part of my concept and I want, I, you know, I want to interview you, but I mean, was what's it the John D Villar digital ventures and stuff like that was it's kind of like a cross between Marcus Lemonis with the profit. In other words, I saw what you said. I mean, cause I had been in Silicon Valley, for a long time and i knew people at sequoia and kleiner and all you know all the best biggest firms and i mean like i was nothing i was basically stood on the shoulder of giants like you know uh uh mario rosati and, and larry sonsini and i met some of the very very yeah. best mike moritz and don valentine and and all you know on and on and on you know john door show hands all, all the you know, have, have exchanged emails everything it doesn't matter and i knew that like like that is a fantastic model if you were trying to 50x 100x thousand X, you need big money. You're going to scale, go to the moon, you know, be a unicorn. Stuff. If you're not, what, what if you're just a company that can crank out $10 million of profit every year, or you, ha or you want to do 2 million or 5 million or 20 million or whatever, or, or you're going to do something a little bit different. You're never going to go public, but you're just going to distribute profits. There's this big space in there of the small, medium sized businesses that need that, that, professional help that can use startup type techniques, can use venture capital type techniques of, of, of sort of disrupting and hacking and growth hacking. And I think that you have that need, plus you have the need now, uh, and no no less than Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank said that, hey, the digital marketers and the, and the chief creatives are gonna be paid more than the CEOs very, very soon. You have the need to combine that creative horsepower and that's why i kind of you know uh, got started going with the john d Villa digital ventures and unfortunately being a super genius I'll, oftentimes i'm years ahead of my time because i mean i think that concept is now people are starting to understand that if we have a hot tiktok video we have a hot concept like armed forces brewing company if we can kind of put some 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 disruptive you know silicon valley type technology in here we can grow super fast and you're seeing some of these things right now so i i love what you're saying because i think the need is there and that's what i'm trying to do of of you know I, and i can't do it by myself that's why i said hey lord were you, were you willing to help maybe alan you'd be willing to, to help here because i think there's such a need for that not just from companies in size and scale but also in terms of uh, let's be honest uh, you know point of view if you're not part of the the super woke hipsters you're not getting that money. You're not getting the, the promotion. You're going to get doors slammed in your face. And you probably saw that when you were trying to promote your company as well, I would imagine. It's, I, totally. Without a doubt. Without a, without a doubt. I sure did. What's your response to that? How do you how do you respond to that? Or how did you how did you find your community? How did you find your audience? Because they try to shut you down on the airways. They try to silence people like you, Alan. Like what I want to hear your entrepreneurial journey. Like, like everybody loves the accolades, and that's fantastic. But people want to hear, like, uh, nah, I kind of feel like like we read Hoffman Masters of Scale, a great podcast, by the way. Um, what did it how did you get it going? How did you do it? What I want to hear about the sleepless nights. I want to hear about what you had to do. Got it. So going back to the beer, the first thing you have to have a good product. You can't have a, a terrible product. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we, we we're making good beer. Uh, what, what, so know, let me stop you there for a second. Chains. What Go makes ahead. that's it? Cause that you just brought something up that people want to know about what makes a great beer. What makes a great beer consistency. So consistency, you got a good product, good tasting product uh, that's fresh and uh, it's consistently good. Uh, uh, there's there's over 25 
uh, years of brewmaster experience in those recipes in this beer that that matters. You know what I mean? Using the right ingredients and stuff. We don't put a product out to market in, unless we we test it, we try it, we test it, we send it through. You know, a lot of different uh, tests uh, with in our tap room with our with our customers, with our shareholders, with you know what I mean. And, and, yeah. and listen, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. And I think people would, would want to know. Like, in other words, sure. let, me, let me ask you this. Is it, can you make a great beer at scale? Or do you need like the craft breweries? Is it, I know there's different amounts of ales and hops and the lights and the darks. And, and there's so much that goes in or probably like wines. It, it, I'm sure it gets super complicated. It does. And this is where the experience of our brewmaster comes into play. You know, these chains, these buyers at Publix and Walmart, and they taste the beer before they bring it on. They just said, let's say, oh, I love your packaging or I love your concept. They taste the beer. Our distributors taste. They want to taste your product before they they invest the money in, in putting you into their portfolio and helping you grow their brand. They taste it. So during this craft beer bubble and everything that, that burst, by the way, there's a lot of uh, breweries that are going under because they just they don't have good products out there. So we're very fortunate. We took great beer. We took a, a very loyal uh, and patriotic and and uh, what sort I want to use honorable uh, consumer segment and uh you know cool marketing because the military is cool oh, <laughs> you know that's I mean? super cool the, let me ask you this can cool i about it can you stay for the next segment or can you can i catch yeah. can I, you're good till six o'clock sure. okay here's what i want to do or sure. at least half the segment so i don't know we'll figure it out but i definitely have a lot more i want to talk to you about i want to bring in paul here as well i'm letting him know that you know to ask some questions in the next segment we still have about three sure. three minutes left in this segment but when you just said that right there, it just struck me. And I thought about this. You're from a marketing perspective, you're almost the anti Bud Light. You're almost <laughs> the opposite, right? And in terms, and I'm not trying to get myself in any trouble, but I just think it's it's very interesting. You're showing now, I mean, because listen, you get a guy like me or something like, like I can't, I'm, you know, I mean, first of all, I'm not, a, I mean, be honest with you, I'm not a big drinker. Uh, uh, really at all. But at the same time, like if you sat me down and, and had to taste different wines, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but, but I kind of like as stupid as it is, it's like, Oh, this seems like it's a good story or it has a cool label or something like that. I mean, I, if I'm, if I'm drinking a beer, I want to drink a beer that's going to like, represent my values. I want to drink a beer that's going to respect me as a consumer. That's going to say, John, I like what you're, where you're coming at. I'm, we're pro military. We're pro America. We're pro, you know, men, whatever it might be. You know what I mean? Men, women, everyone like that. And it's just a different thing. I think you're coming at this from a place and looking at your website, looking at a, a real respect for the consumer, respect for the military. Do I have that right or wrong? Absolutely. You got it totally right. Absolutely. And we're never going to stray away from that either. You know, Budweiser spent, I mean, they were the, the king of beers. You know, they spent decades and decades and decades doing great things for, for veterans and great things in the military. And, and what, what a, what a, I don't know, watch what I say here. I know, what right? Marketing for pa. What, what a marketing mistake. Yeah. You know, especially. Brutal. A Marine is the CEO of, of Anheuser-Busch, too. I, I just, I don't know where that came from. Anyway, we got tossed into that conversation, by the way, John. Uh, and, you know, our sales shot up uh, 600%. You know? Wow. Uh, oh, my God. I want to talk all about that. that. I yeah, want to talk it, all about that. We've got about a... We're, we got about a minute here. Uh, let me bring in Paul super, super quick. Any quick comments, Paul, here before the break? We got about 60 seconds. Then we'll, we'll, we're, we're going to talk to him next break, next segment. Oh, looks like we got less than that. Okay, Paul, tell me. Listen, you're listening to John D. Villar Radio Show here on News Talk 1040. We're with Alan Beal of Armed Forces Brewing Company. We're talking Bud Light. We're talking woke. We're talking business capitalism. He's got the preamble patriotic uh, uh, kit right there. Unbelievable. I love it. This is John D. Villar Radio Show on News Talk 1040, live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and X. Be back in six minutes. <laughs> Fun stuff.
News. I'm Keith Peters reporting. The United Nations Security Council issued its first demand for a ceasefire in Gaza, with the U.S. angering Israel by abstaining from the vote. Israel responded to Monday's vote by canceling a visit to Washington by a high-level delegation in the strongest public clash between the Allies since the war began. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused the U.S. of retreating by allowing the vote to pass without conditioning the ceasefire on the release of hostages held by Hamas. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that the gunmen who raided a suburban Moscow concert hall and killed 139 people were radical Islamists. At the same time, he reaffirmed his claim that Ukraine could have played a role in the attack despite its strong denials and the Islamic State group's claim of responsibility. More details at srnnews.com. And now another no-brainer money-saving tip from Progressive. That doesn't sound good. Paper shredder's jammed, but I think I fixed it. Oh, well, try shredding these $50 bills then. Seems like it's working. Mm, better try another 400 bucks. Stop. Instead of using money, use regular paper. And here's a better tip from Progressive on how not to waste money. Don't pay too much for car insurance. Drivers who switch and save could save hundreds. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. Trish Regan provides the analysis you need each day on the Trish Regan Podcast on the Salem Podcast Network. The Democrats keep getting this one wrong. They think that they can just flip states. That suddenly all the Hispanics are going to vote for, for Joe Biden. And in fact, what you're actually seeing in places like Texas is Hispanics. They're overwhelmingly coming out in favor of Trump. Subscribe to the Trish Regan Podcast today on Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Rumble, or at SalemPodcastNetwork.com. News Talk 1040, Tampa Bay weather forecast. Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Alan Archer. News Talk 1040, WHBO's weather center forecast. Nice weather to start off the week here. However, a storm system over the Midwest eventually wants to take a cold front into central Florida here on Thursday, which sound will likely see some strong thunderstorms, especially early Thursday. In the meantime, today, partly sunny with a high of 84 on a southeasterly breeze, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Tonight, fair at 66, while then tomorrow, partly sunny. Warmer at 85, Wednesday clouds up, a 50% late afternoon, 70% strong evening storm, and a high at 83. But then on Thursday, more rainy, stormy, blustery weather, cooler at 77 at News Talk 1040 WHBO. Lots of attorneys talk a big game. Catania and Catania is one of Tampa's only... Crabby? Oh, sorry. I said, great job. There we all, go. all the stories, love everything, man. Yeah, we definitely need to connect. Um, what I'll do, is, if you want, we can, um, when the show's over at six, we can hang and talk for maybe 10 minutes if that works for you. Sure. Okay, cool. Definitely. We definitely, uh, yeah, my brother's fired up too. Do, 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 do. All right. I'll, I'll mute myself here. What's up, everyone? It's John D. Filler all here. The last segment of the John D. Filler Radio Show live on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and X. And of course, News Talk 1040. This is News Talk 1040 in the John D. Filler Radio Show. And I'm talking with Alan Beal, the CEO of Armed Forces Brewing Company. We've been talking about all kinds of stuff. We've been talking about how we started the company. We've been talking about Bud Light. We've been talking about all that type of stuff. 
Let me bring in Paul just for a quick second here. Paul, uh, you've been hearing some of this. You've been listening to it. I mean, as I said, as I said in preview, it's kind of like the anti Bud Light story, and this is a really fascinating situation. What do you want to say to Alan Beal right now? Look, I think it's Alan. The the thing that impresses me the most in listening to Alan is how well he understands the investment, uh, the, the VC and investment game. Like he has a total command of that, which is not everybody has that. So it makes me think even more that the company is going to be successful. That's a really good point. <laughs> I mean, and that what I think what Paul's getting at there is it's rare to see a combination of that financing, growth, scaling, business background with the marketing, the understanding your consumer and the product. Like, how long did it take you to sort of develop those skills? Well, not very long because I had already grown up in the military community. I'm a 35-year veteran of the food and beverage industry. So I really understood the, the military community, the military mindset of respect and honor and tribute and, and patriotism. And I really understood the dollars and cents and the, and the trends of the food and beverage industry, too. So... Uh, I just, I, 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 I can, uh, you know, we put together a five-year performa. We put together a business plan, video, all the bells and whistles and these venture capitalists and private equity firms, they, they wanted nothing to do with this. It was very, very weird to say, and one could only deduct that maybe welcome it was a life. political thing. I'm telling you, welcome to my life. That's it. I mean, the thing is, is like I had, I mean, again, I, I don't want to, you know, this is about you, not about me right now, but it's like. I was in Silicon Valley. I was super hot for my level, was doing all kinds of incredible things that, you know, some things that have never been done before and whatnot. And, you know, I had a bunch of things going on. We had, uh, I was in a venture fund with the former CEO of Apple, Gil Emilio. I had brought in like 35, 36 clients of law firm, Wilson Son, Senior Curvature Zotti. Tons and tons, a massive percentage, super massive percentage got funded. A number of them got exits. And, then I had, because I'm an expert in video game, I was I used to host GameSpot TV, a world class gamer, was doing video game deals, and also was was a you know a, a national TV show for for video games, and so you had these big funds that wanted me to kind of like hey kind of have a fund of funds that kind of be able to incubate some of these deals and they anyway, we started doing deal, we started doing video, started launching the YouTube thing, whatever like that. Started doing, I came up with conservative new media because I'm like, hey, we don't have something to, you know, like like the Young Turks over here. We don't have anything on our side that understands that. Everything was uh. like, right? <laughs> and then we started doing some videos on on President Obama, and let me tell you, whoa, you you couldn't turn the lights out fast enough. I mean, the <laughs> the lights went out, brother, and I'm not saying they're related. But it's just funny timing. And all of a sudden, we've got you know, the New York Times doing, Paul talked about that, the New York Times doing articles on Paul, who's, I mean, I love my brother. I'm nobody. He's really nobody, right? I mean, it's, but I mean, they, and they thought we were funded and who's behind you. And, and it was like, I mean, I'm just, when, when I had people that thought I was wearing a tinfoil hat and not some of my good friends that are like big time, big time connected in Wall Street and some echelons and, you know, they're like, like connected to super big money. I'm like, wait a minute, time out. It's one thing online or this and that, whatever. Tell me the last time the New York Times spent ink, not digital, ink on someone that wasn't important. And these are these are serious reports. Who were the reporters? It was um, it was uh, Carney and who was the reporters, Paul? That that, that covered you. It was it was two dudes in particular. Uh, Jim Rudenberg. Jim Rudenberg. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, so I, I put that across him, and then you said crickets, right? They can't answer it. We're on, we were on someone's list somewhere, somehow, and there, I, I, there's more to that. But you obviously experienced this. And so now when you talk about this, now we've seen Russell Brand and Tate and Rogan. They've come after Trump. They've come after Elon everybody. Musk. Elon Musk, dude. If they can go after a former president and the richest dude in the world, they can certainly go after a, a nobody like John Villarreal or Paul Villarreal. And so – this is what I'm trying to talk about. Your journey with Armed Forces Brewing Company is so important. And I think that people want to learn from you. I think people want that community. Obviously, you've built a huge community, but there's a larger community of just patriotic Americans, 
independent minded or I just want to do my business without being political or I'm concerned or whatever it is that want to be able to support businesses that support them, that want to be able to drink a beer that they feel they're aligned with, not the Bud Light. I mean, Bud Light, that was, I mean, and we're not against anybody, but you're basically, it's the same thing that's happening with the Marvel Universe that we talked about. Same thing is happening in Star Wars. You're basically taking a fan base, a consumer base, and saying that we don't want you anymore. Uh, metaphorically speaker, in my opinion, people don't like that. And when I saw, I'll say one last thing and I'll turn right back over to you. When I saw my boy, my, 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 my guy, Mark Anderson, love that. That guy's legendary, liking your stuff. And this is a veteran. This is a guy who's been a leader over at EY. He's winding down there, getting ready to retire. And, he, and, and he's so patriotic. And, and I, I mean, liking your stuff. I said, I got to learn what's going on with Armed Forces Brewing Company. So don't you think that it's, 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 there's a tipping point? And there's a time right now where I think your timing – is almost perfect because people want to get back to feeling great about America again, and they want to get back to feeling like, hey, I can vote for whoever I want to vote for, and it's okay. To 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 totally agree. And and honestly, like I said, we have we have our ten thousand plus shareholders in our company, and like the Patriots, you know, they 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 gravitated toward this. They said, hey, I love. First of all, I love the concept. I love the veterans. I love to give back. And then they tried the beer and they went, holy crap, the beer's good too. Excuse my language. <laughs> the beer's good too. So uh, they they jumped, they jumped in and it's an, an affordable investment. And, you know, you, you talked about uh, being profitable and an exit. This is a long-term investment. It's not, you know, short. We're not IPO. We haven't gone public yet. But that would be great to go IPO someday. It would be great to get acquired by Anheuser Busch, or you know, there's there's bigger brewing companies out there buying up little ones all over the place still. Uh, so you never know what that's going to look like. You know, Facebook didn't make a profit for ten years. Absolutely. Amazon wasn't making a profit. You know what I mean? So absolutely, uh, we're just we're growing. I would love to see too at some point, like some kind of, and this is again where the digital media and the marketing, and the events, you know, some of the, some more of my stuff comes into play too. I think maybe it's like having like some kind of armed forces brewing games or something like that. You know, you have, you have like, you have uh, um, Red Bull has their little, their little flotillas and their different things. And Rockstar has some different things, like some kind of, some kind of like extreme games or so. I don't know. I'm just coming up. Paul, do you have a question well, here for Alan Beal? Well, Alan, I mean, you said the company is growing. Do you have like, are there any particular plans? Like, are there any like, like more products or divisions or anything that you want to like uh, put in there? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've got four, four core brands out to market right now in your Walmarts, your Publix, all the, all the chains. Uh, we got, we got more beers that we're producing, two more brands that are going out to market too, because we got to make beers that tribute each branch. You know what I mean? They're they're knocking down the doors to get their own beer. <laughs> and, awesome. uh, uh, yeah, when we want to open up a chain of tap room and foodery concepts around the country, and your guys' area is right on our target. Oh, that's it. Well, you've got you've got the Southern Command down here, and the Special yeah. Forces stuff. You got so many and there's so many military uh, affiliated folks down here. There's no doubt about it. We really, really love it. Um, I, I would, I'm assuming Texas is probably on the radar screen, of course, and then you know the Carolinas, Georgia. There's so many different places, and this is what this is what's so great about it. It speaks to America. This speaks to yeah. america this is what it's all about so you you what is going on you you've so much experience in food and beverages the the concepts keep evolving i remember when chipotle first launched and that took everyone by storm you know the the the, the fast casual what's happening with food and beverages right now this we had smart waters vitamin waters different things like that <laughs> like a lot of celebrities are trying to get in the mix what's the newest what's the latest and greatest well, so, so, I wouldn't say seltzer is new, but it's it's really crowded now. Everybody went to seltzers. Every beer company, you know, big beer company is starting to make or, or has been making seltzers. Um, uh, so so the, the industry went that direction. But the biggest market right now uh, that, well, I shouldn't say the biggest market, but one of one of the fastest growing segments right now in the, on the beverage side is non-alcoholic beverages okay so 
technology in the brewing industry has made great strides here in the last several years. You can now get zero alcohol. You can, you can make a true zero beer. It takes a very expensive wow. piece of equipment that you haven't invested money in called a dealkalizer, but you can get the, the zero out of there. Most non-alcohol non-alcohol beers are like 0.05 percent ABV. They got like a little bit, right? They got a little bit in there. You know what I mean? And we want to make a beer that, that we want those veterans with major PTSD that it should not be drinking alcohol at all to be able to join with us and drink a beer with us. So that's a that's a big segment we're getting into uh, in 2024 uh, as we you know keep growing the portfolio here. So. Um, the, Go ahead. So I was going to ask you that's to along those along those lines, kind of like what are the products that people like a lot? Like what 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 are your top sellers? What do the people really like? Yeah, so the IPA market is king. Everyone, you know, that's what sells is IPA. So we actually led with this beer. Uh, this is the first beer we ever produced yeah, yeah. called Special Hops IPA, and it's a tribute to U.S. Navy SEALs. That's awesome. That's so strong. Well, this right is our there. top seller right here, but a close second, it, and this is six point seven ABV. So it's got a little. It's got a little bit to it. Okay, but okay. A close second is this one right here. This is called Preamble. We the People Light Session Lager. This is that Bud Light Miller Light alternative, but with got it. flavor. Four point two ABV, and this is your our patriotic beer. This is the only patriotic beer that we're going to make because we want it we want it to stand alone by itself the preamble so cool. of the constitution and the oath that our service members take and then we're making beers that tribute like services within each branch we've got one for we got a, a coffee porter that we came out with that's selling like crazy and it's wow. called death from above it's a tribute to your air force bomber wings and and we have give backs attached to this too you know who John Daly, the golfer, is? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So this this beer right here, our preamble, we donate a percentage of, of the proceeds every quarter to the John Daly Major Ed Heart of a Lion Foundation. So now, what is that? Now, what does that foundation do? That foundation foundation is out there, John Daly, and Major Ed Polito is a Purple Heart recipient. Um, oh. he's he's uh, uh, on our advisory board as well. And uh, they go out. They go out there, and they're just doing all sorts of good uh, programs and, and giving back to our uh, uh, veterans, our first responders. But they they just now started diving into children with cancer as well. So they're raising a lot of money out there and giving giving uh, back to other organizations that are in. You know, it, it, it's just a great mission that they're on. Um, and then Code of Vets is another one, or Death from Above Coffee Porter. We've connected that in the same way to uh, Code of Vets. And what a special organization They're great. Code of Vets is. Paul, Paul, I know you're... Code of Vets. I, I know that woman. She's great. Yeah, Paul. Small yeah, world. Uh, Gretchen Smith is on our advisory board. She's an Air Force veteran. Uh, oh, and, awesome. Uh, yes. We work with her to literally save veterans from going homeless over Christmas, over wow. the holidays and stuff. I, it's amazing. There, you know, you, you, you yeah, you just, when you just speak here, it just, I love the passion. I love the good work. I love what you're doing here. And it just gets me, I mean, I, my, I'm just thinking about so many things. <laughs> There's so much great work that needs to be done right here at home. People want to feel good about America again. People want to help their neighbors. People want to help their veterans that, that protect our freedom, that protect our rights. People want the military to, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak or use it, but I mean, again, it, it just, it, you're, I'm starting to hear that make America great again, that MAGA type of thing. There's something <laughs> going on here. There could be a red wave happening. And I just think that the time is, is there. I love your, I love your background too. the wall, that, 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 that flag, that is just, fantastic i think you've done such a great job with uh with the branding and everything it's just really fantastic and you're probably seeing it out there beyond the veterans i mean i'm sure you've got a lot of customers that are like you know what like maybe i didn't serve in the military but i love this cause and i love this beer and i love the brand i mean the branding is just like i think spot on right now are you seeing that are you seeing that even just just regular americans non-veterans are gravitating to this brand Absolutely, because 
I think everyone in America knows somebody who served in the military or knows a, a police officer. Maybe it's their neighbor or a family member or something like that. Everybody in America practically, you know, knows somebody who served. So yeah, not to, now, then again, we have people in America that know veterans and know people who have served and still hate America and all that stuff. Unfortunately, that goes on. But you got to you got to pose the question to those kind of people and say, what's wrong with making America great again? What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. There's nothing, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with that saying. So what? We what's wanna, your What's your, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into this or not, and we, and we don't have to by any stretch, but if you just, you kind of, you bring some things up. I mean, obviously it sounds like you're a little more, more conservative like, like us and stuff like that. Like where, where do you think, do you have a prediction for this uh, election? Number one. And number two, uh -oh. you look at what's happening in New York and the news that came out, you know, it, it, a lot of people, Kevin O'Leary and others that some of these blue states, New York, California, whatever, are becoming very business unfriendly. Florida, other places, Virginia, Virginia Governor Yunkin, things have switched there a little bit. I mean, I know that, yeah. that like, you know, you've got Oliver Anthony with the rich man north of Richmond, and there is a sort of a bluing of that sort of belt around D.C., but even with Virginia, I, I think it's, that's, I'd love to hear what, what you report about Virginia because you're right there. Well, first of all, if you go and, and Google Armed Forces Brewing Company, Norfolk, Virginia, we bought it. The brewing facility that was for for sale there it is was perfect for us to grow. You know, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, the largest military market in the country. Wow. And we bought this brewery right in the bluest area of Norfolk, Virginia. So the cancel culture came after us right away because of, of, of our branding and, you know, we were violent and we triggered them and all that kind of stuff. They came, they came after us and we ended up having to threaten to sue the city of Norfolk to get our, our permits that we needed uh, uh, to open because uh, uh, the civic associations and everyone else were denying uh, or, or, or making bad recommendations because of our, of our core values. Man, honestly, be crazy. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. We, but we won, you know, we won, we're settled in. Everyone's welcome at our brewery, you know, whether they're LGBTQ or whatever. whatever. We doesn't don't matter. care. Come and have a beer. Nobody you know cares. I mean? It doesn't exactly. matter. So and, and that's a great point. Like, like, like your 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 tap rooms. Are you I mean, you know, one of the successes of uh, you know um a brand like Starbucks was hey this is a meeting place hey you can kind of kick it it's 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 the cafe in in europe or something like that or you can do some business you can have a meeting there is there a level of vibe and community in your tap rooms like what's what does that look like take us inside a tap room yeah the, yeah so um it it is amazing to be in a room full of patriotic americans and veterans that served and their family members and their kids running around the the, the you know in the tap room and having fun and everybody sitting down having a beer having food together breaking bread talking about stories of their service um, the, the beer and the messaging behind the beer. I mean, we tell a story about each beer as well. It's not just here. Here's this can, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, I, I love the preamble. I, just, I, love, I love that whole, I mean, both, all, both your packaging, the packaging looks great, but that's just that preamble. I'm like, that's just, that just makes so much sense. But, yeah. but so, so when people, yeah. So people feel that it's, it's almost like it's, it's a very themed out, uh, destination. It sounds like it. Um, we didn't over theme it though. You know what right. I mean? We didn't, we didn't over theme it. We've got a lot, uh, like on, uh, we have a lot of, of lighting concepts in there. Like on Friday, you're wearing red right now. We do red Friday at, at the facility. Remember oh. everyone deployed because we've got aircraft carrier, uh, uh, groups that, that go pull out of Norfolk and the, you know, the seals train there and oh. all that kind of yep. stuff and, and pull out of there. So we've got ships coming and going and, and, uh, so we do red Friday there. 
Uh, we light up the inside of, of the tanks and everything red and the outside of the building and everybody's wearing red that day. And it's just, it's super patriotic and, and, and uh, awesome to be in. How, how much, uh, this is really, I mean, we don't have too much time. I, I'd love to have you on again, there's no doubt about it. How much of the sure. business is in stores and distribution, like the Publix and the, and the Walmarts and how much is in the tap rooms? What does that mix look like? So uh, this this spring is when we're ab absolutely going to explode. All of the all of the uh, chains do what they call spring sets. It's, it's a reset. It's where they get rid of the beers that they don't sell and they bring in new brands. Well, we they brought us in even re before their reset, and we wow. sold so well they kept us on for spring sets. And now you've got Carnival Cruise Lines picking up our beer. You got NASCAR Concessions picking up beer. So we're going to explode here, uh, and you know we've got. 12, 24 taps in our, in our tap room right now. So we're test marketing beers and there's a lot going on at, at our, at our, uh, uh, in our company right now, as we're getting ready to explode out in, into the country. It, it sounds super, super exciting. Yeah. Like what, and what, and I don't know how much you can say or, or not right now, but I think what are the next areas of opportunity? Do you, are you just, uh, beers and ales? Do you do coffee? Are you going to do uh, more food? I'm sure you've got some food and stuff at these tap rooms. I'm, I'm assuming, you know, like, like what does that look like? So we're using food trucks right now. We haven't, we haven't installed the kitchen component into our, into our large beer hall tap room, which holds about 600 people, by the way, wow. <laughs> it's big. Uh, but, but we're, you know, we've been developing a food concept for years. When we started this, we knew we wanted to open up a tap room foodery concept. But like I said, John, we're looking in your guys area. We want Tampa Bring that, it. Area, right, in that area to be where we put our, our, our tap room foodery concept. And, you know, right now we're raising money out there. We got 10,000 plus shareholders uh, and they're, they're very involved in our company as well. Matter of fact, we, we, we let them know before we release new beers, before we go on these, these new missions. You got like a newsletter or something like that, a way to communicate. I do, I do weekly videos for the shareholders. Yeah. They get to log into their own portal and they get to watch the CEO update them on all the great progress in the company. Uh, so, so we do that. We, we keep in contact with them. It's not, Hey, thanks for your money. We'll see you later. They're involved. <laughs> so cool. so if, can I give a, can I give our URL? A plug yeah, I, was, I was, I was, you're, you're reading my mind. How do people find out more about what you're doing and plug into armed forces brewing company? Yeah, they can go to www.ownarmedforcesbrewingco.com and invest in the company. It's safe and secure. Uh, it's a $200 minimum buy-in, really affordable share prices are $12.50. And like I said, we've got 10,000 plus shareholders from all 50 states in, in our company. It's just an awesome community and family of, of patriots, veterans, active duty, first responders, and their family members. And of course, everything uh, compliant with regulation A, and you've got your legal team yes. there and all that type of stuff. And, and you know, and I will, I will say, I will say this, I will say this, I'll, I'll, I'll give them props. I mean, I, I try to be straight up and, and honest about everything. Um, you know, President Obama, I, I didn't agree with a lot of policies, but one of the greatest things that's coming out of that administration was the crowdfunding type of reggae yeah. type of stuff. Is I think that there was definitely that need right there. And I think that, you know, that, 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 that he was tuned into that Silicon Valley thing and obviously had a lot of support for Silicon Valley. So I definitely appreciate that. And I think that th this is these types of things as have been, like you said, you tried venture capital as you, you struck out there. A lot of people struck out there. It wasn't on you. It was on them because obviously look at the success of your company right now. And it was great patriots and Americans that stepped up and said that we want to be part of this. We want to, we want to join you, Alan, and doing armed forces brewing company. That is absolutely fantastic. Paul, super quick. Any last thoughts you want to say here? Yeah, I just want to say this very quickly. I live not far from Penn State, and the town of Penn State, one of the staples of the community, is a place called Otto's. 
and it sounds like it's like their brewery themselves and they're they're like they're they're massive here and it sounds like you guys could fit up fill the niche just like that i'm digging it okay alan stay here stay with us but unfortunately all of our great listeners and viewers here on news talk 1040 we will see you next week thank you so much this is the john d Villar radio show for paul allen everyone at, at news talk 1040 we thank you so much have a great week stay blessed and we will see you next week